All right, today on Beerus TV, another Our Failures, Your Lessons. You don't have to go down all the hard paths that we did. Today's return pumps, top 20 return oh, yeah. pump failures. Made a lot of them. Oh, yeah, tons. Of, <laughs> uh, there's probably double. Maybe we'll make a second episode. I don't know. But there's so many return pump failures that we've done that you don't have to. You're going to learn them all today. And uh, starting with number one. That number one mistake is assuming that these DC pumps are better than AC pumps. And that may come as a surprise because that is what, where the technology has led us to. And there's a bunch of reasons why DC might be better, but actually AC still has a place in the hobby. Yeah, I guess it depends on how you define better. Yeah. But everybody wants better technology, more features, more little buttons, more alarms, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. But this is one thing I'll say. The AC pumps of the world are not only generally a lot uh, cheaper, yep. but they have like looser tolerances. It's technology that's been developed over decades and they, work. they just work. <laughs> so there's a good chance that your CJ pump will outlast your interest in the hobby, meaning decades. Uh, so one of the things about those things is don't just assume that when you get a DC pump that you're getting a better pump for sure. It will do some things better for sure, mm -hmm. but in terms of just actually running, AC pumps work really well. All right, so number two, though, is kind of related to one of the benefits of the DC. Yeah, the mistake here is missing that DC pumps are quiet, and they are absolutely that. I think I remember my first big, heavy-duty uh, AC pump, and when I made the switch to DC, it was like night and day. I couldn't hear it anymore. There is no question. Uh, most AC pumps out there make a mm, That's true. You know, hum noise, right? <laughs> That's true. And uh, it's even worse if it's sitting right on the glass or yeah. uh, up against the glass. And sometimes you'll put like a silicone mat on it, wrap it in silicone. Silicone too. Yeah, you do all kinds of different things to try to dampen it, but there is kind of that like electrical hum. That, yeah. And it kind of compounds if there's more and more and more of them, right? Yeah. So DC pumps, now they all do it to a different degree, but uh, most DC pumps are really quiet, like so quiet in many cases you can't even hear them. Yeah, you have a whole bunch of them in your tank at home, like what, four, three or four of them? Can't yep. hear a single one. I think I have a, a DC pump on my skimmer, mm -hmm. a DC pump for the uh, re reactor. Uh, the reactor. Yeah. I have uh, two DC pumps that are feeding the uh, dual returns, and then I think I have a fifth one actually on the floor for another uh, for the, uh, the closed loop UV yeah. sterilizer. <laughs> so I got five DC pumps in there. Can't even hear ones on. That's true. And so uh, a couple of them are the Abyss pumps, and then a couple of them are the Red Dragon pumps. I thought for sure mm -hmm. with five of them there would be some amount of noise. I had plans like sound dampen the walls and all kinds of stuff. Don't need to do it now. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if you really want to be quiet, DC pumps are your way to go. Uh, the super high-end stuff with the Abyss and the Red Dragons are like dead silent, can't even hear they're on. And then the Neptunes and the Varios here, I would say that in most cases, mm -hmm. you won't be able to hear they're on over any other, like if your skimmer makes any noise, this will not make any noise. Yeah, I, I believe it too. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that was one of the biggest benefits of DC, so don't miss that. So this is one that I think when I came into the hobby, everybody did, mm -hmm. but hopefully don't do it anymore. Yeah, that's uh, assuming that your return pump is part of your flow or the flow for the display tank. Uh, this is one that uh, I feel like came with me from like fresh water or stuff like that, because all you kind of really need is a return pump, it circulates enough water. But we're talking, you know, for the needs of the corals and stuff in the tank, adding the flow in the tank. So calculating your return pump into the flow and the display, it's just gonna, it just complicates things. This came from the BRS WWC hybrid, it was kind of where we delineated the two. There's circulation flow for filtration, and then there's flow inside the tank. So to get enough flow to come out of your returns, I mean, you gotta have a massive amount of water going through your sump. Mm -hmm. uh, it just isn't worth it. There's so much cheaper, so many easier ways to get flow into your tank mm -hmm. than worry about uh, using these things uh, for flow. So really you're just trying to like circulate through your life support. So for most people, there's always a little anomaly out there somewhere. Yeah, that's for true. a vast majority of people, don't think about your return pump as providing flow in your tank. It's just circulating the water through your life support. So super close related to that is actually how fast most people in the past have told you to circulate the water through your tank. Yeah, that mistake is assuming that 10x or 10 times circulation through, you know, a, a pump needs to be 10 times. Uh, you just really don't need that much. And again, this came from like the BRS WWC hybrid where they were running their big giant 900, 500 gallon systems at, you know, two times, three times turnover. So actually accounting for a smaller return pump 
you know, rather than trying to reach that 10x, saves you money by getting a smaller pump. Yeah, you can save a ton of money on electricity, you can mm -hmm. save a ton of money on the pump itself, yeah. you can save uh, on space, you can save all kinds of things. And the reality is, is like you really are only circulating through water through the life support in the sump up to the tank, and you only need to get the water through there as many times as is required for that. At a thousand or ten times turnover, that means all or a vast majority mm. of the water in the tank has gone through the sump every six minutes. Yeah, I think Josh and that's uh, unnecessary. Yeah, I think Josh at WWC put it best, or somewhere like that, where he says, "Really, you go with circulation enough to heat the water and keep the water at a specific temperature." If you can heat your water, I think that you probably uh, are doing well enough in most cases. So you're like our our filtration there are not a single pass. If you don't get it the first time, you'll never get it. I mean, you're, if I'm doing three times turnover an hour. That means that my filter socks got three passes an hour, mm, right? That's a lot. It means my skimmer got three passes in an hour. It means like all the filtration. It means the water that's heated in there is almost certainly enough. So I would actually shoot for two, maybe three, maybe four X, but past that, you know, really mm. try to apply that to what your goals are. It really doesn't have to turn over that much. All right, number five, you probably don't want to hear this, but it's true. Yeah, that's making the mistake of assuming what's on the box for flow rate is what you're going to get out of your pump because a lot of times, most of the time, it's vastly different. Yeah, really. So if it says it does 1,000 gallons an hour, it means that uh, if I put this sump or pump in the tank and uh, didn't put any plumbing on it, 1,000 gallons an hour would come out the top. Right here. Uh, <laughs> so nobody's actually running it that way. And so if you thought you wanted to do 10x turnover for say on a 100 gallon tank mm. and I got a thousand gallon pump, oh sweet, I did it. Well, the reality is after you go through all of your plumbing and the height and all the twists and turns, you might have as little as like 400 gallons. In fact, I think a good rule of thumb is just to have it, right? Yeah. Right at the top. So if you think, if it says a thousand gallons an hour on it, just assume it only does 500, but they actually have charts so you can actually start to figure out at head height. But most people aren't gonna do all the math on like how to you know account for all the 90s and 40s mm -hmm. and everything. So just assume it's gonna do a lot less than it says. So number six is actually do that math. Yeah, that's uh, the mistake is not accounting for that head pressure. And we did an investigates, uh, pseudo investigates on 90s and 45s and height and stuff like that. Probably one that we'll uh, investigate a little further down the road here. But uh, calculating that head pressure really comes into account when you start. Uh, almost everybody's tanks at like four or five feet off of the ground from your, from your sump to your display. The amount of twists and turns and the constriction of your pipe calculates into that factor too. Yeah, so for sure, at least at minimum, go find the head pressure chart for the pump and then apply the distance between where the sump is, or the pump is and where it's gonna enter the tank. And then I would do is it maybe add two or three feet more for your plumbing. Uh, so if it says if your height's at six feet, make it nine, and then you'll probably get pretty close to the actual flow rate of the pump. All right, so we tell you all the time that these pumps here are actually the heart of your system, mm -hmm. pumping all the water through the life support, through the tank, and cycling it, keeping everything healthy. So what if they fail? <laughs> yeah, the mistake is uh, not thinking about those smart pumps out there. So we all know that you know the core and the Neptune Apex the pump, like those are a smart system altogether that can alert you for all kinds of reasons. But there's other ones out there too that can do the same thing. The CHA SDC pump, it has, you know, once you connect it to Wi-Fi, it can tell you temperature, it can tell you power on and off, and it has all of these features on there, like, like it ran dry or it's clogged, that can alert you even if you're not there. So without a controller, yeah. what I've done is bought a return pump now with the CHA SDC, like DC pump, yeah. and it has like a heartbeat. So it'll tell me if it stops working, it'll tell me if it got disconnected, and uh, by default, it'll kind of tell me that the power's out too uh, if it gets disconnected. True. Uh, I got all this from uh, Thomas's video actually, because <laughs> it's really pretty one. cool to watch yep. that one. So uh, yeah, so you can actually, with all, the, the all advanced controllers out there, you can get actually a specific pump that will not mm -hmm. only tell you when it fails, it will send it like out via your phone, but uh, it's just a really, really, really cool tool that even gets to things like power outages. All right, so number eight is kind of the evolution of that. And that's missing the value of zero to 10 volt control or apex ready pumps. And these are two examples right here. This is the Reef Octopus. It has zero to 10 volt control, which means instead of the five speed settings I have with the controller, I can zero to 10 volt and get finite control. And then you have the 
apex ready, apex ready core. So with like five different additional alerts plus all kinds of smart features. Yeah, so that's one of the things is like, I can control this one even on the fly from my app or whatever with a lot of different controllers. But a lot of times an Apex Ready by Apex is actually better. So I didn't know this until like you did your video actually. Yeah. But you know, when you make it for yourself, in this case, it actually has not just notifications that it's failed, mm -hmm. but it'll tell you overcurrent, undercurrent, that it needs uh, essentially needs maintenance, uh, that it's clogged, you know, from the different mm -hmm. speed ratings. It's also going to tell you that it, it uh, ran dry. Yep, exactly. It, yeah, exactly. It's going to tell you all kinds of different things specific to actually how it failed, and you can see it right in your app. So you know, knowing why it's gonna fail, or even some of these things tells you that it's slowing down, that it's uh, probably got maintenance issues, that it needs to be clean, some calcium carbon is built up, and you can catch it before it fails is a super, super big value. Number nine, some you've heard us talk about a lot, so keep it a little short, but it's super important. Yeah, that's uh, missing the value of two pumps instead of one, and I think Terrence brought this one up year, a couple years back, and just, it made sense when, rather than have one heart, to control all of the tank, why not have two hearts and if one fails, I still have something going. It's a nature of redundancy. Yep. So uh, instead of rather trying to catch it when it fails, I can actually make sure that if I go from three times turnover to one and a half, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And especially in the case of DC pumps, two of this actually cost the same as one of these. So it doesn't even have to cost any more money for the most part, uh, and you can have redundancy. So if one pump fails, the thing is still going, your system's still running, and you have all the benefits of your life support and none of like the emergency or panic of when it goes down. All right, so number 10, you can't always have two pumps. A lot of systems are only built for one, so? So if you have one pump, don't make the mistake of not maintaining it because maintaining it will keep it running smoothly. I'll tell you two things actually. So I definitely want to clean it, so I'm just not waiting for it to get to that final point of where it clogs. But also mm -hmm. consider the quality of the pump that you're going to use. Uh, true. Uh, sometimes uh, just by uh, reputation in the market, sometimes by like warranty. Some of them are like 10 years and some of them are like six months. So <laughs> uh, if, the, if the person that sold it or built it only uh, suspects that it's going to last six months, you should do. <laughs> uh, so in that case, so think about uh, the warranty. I think like CJs are like five years. Yep. The Abysses, like I, I believe, are like 10. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not really sure on all of them. But you pay attention to the quality of the pump if you only have one, because it does matter. And then maintenance it so it never goes down. All right, so number 11 is related to using your pump externally. Yeah, the mistake is not using leak sensors or leak detectors on your external pumps. And uh, like you said, we're not looking for a huge catastrophic failure, but that water is starting to drip. So, I mean, there's a couple different options. Watchdogs and Apex leak sensors, and there are probably a few other ones out there also. Yeah, Watchdog, 12 bucks. <laughs> so uh, Watchdog is just two little uh, pads that goes on the ground. Super and loud. 12 bucks, you can get it from us, you can get it from Home Depot usually and it sets off an alarm like a fire alarm in your house that's leaking, mm -hmm. saves your house from damage, and uh, really just doesn't take much to develop a leak over time. So 12 bucks if you're gonna have uh, kind of that kind of plumbing and external pump and it's got seals in it and stuff, let it go. Also, uh, in many cases, you, if you have like an apex, you can use their leak detectors, in which case, at that same time, you can like turn stuff on and off to actually solve it if mm -hmm. you're not at home. So that's really cool as well. So if you're gonna run external, make sure you're considering leaks. So number 12, I actually could have covered earlier, uh, related to silencing your pump. Yeah, the mistake is not putting a piece of silicone on the output of your pump. AC, DC, it just makes it, softens up any vibration noise that might come, and it could come from DC or AC. Uh, also makes it quickly removable. Almost any pump has some amount of vibration to it. You know, right. Some spinning around pretty fast in there. Yep. So uh, it will transfer that to whatever it's touching. So if you want to transfer it to a pipe that comes out of the water and then is connected to your big sump, essentially creating a big instrument. Right. Uh, so it's pretty loud. So if you put that little bit of silicone tubing between here and uh, the top of your sump uh, or where it leaves, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow any of that vibration to travel. It costs just a few bucks and a really, really easy way to silence your sump if you're having any issues with that. So 13, why external? Yeah, the, and that is the mistake, missing the value of external. And there's a few cases, a lot of people use them on water mixing stations, but in the case of you know long runs and higher head pressures, external beats internal in almost all cases when it comes to pushing water higher. 
Yeah, and mostly that's related to the type of pumps that you can mm -hmm. use externally, like all of the reflow pumps. The reflows, like you said, are really, really popular on those mixing stations. Right. So that actually brings up another opportunity for me is that it's super easy to maintenance in that case. I don't have to crawl inside that big tub True. to get down there mm -hmm. and maintenance it. So think about the values. There's also some other ones like it doesn't transfer all that heat into the water. Sure. So like if I submerge it, 100% of the heat's going in there. If I have it externally, a lot of that heat is going to vent off into the surrounding room mm -hmm. instead. So yeah, those are some of the reasons, but the biggest ones probably, because a whole different array of pumps are, are available. So if you got to go through your floor or you got to go upstairs or anywhere else, it's a really great option. Number 14, one of the most common ways that you're going to destroy your pump. Yeah, do not make the mistake of overlooking those pumps that will not run dry on you. A lot of pumps these days are smart. We just talked about the uh, SDC by CJ that will send you alerts. We have, you know, the Core, the Vectra, these uh, Reef Octopus pumps. The Reef Octopus pumps actually have a float switch that you can set in your sump. So if it triggers, it'll just shut the pump off. But there's smart ones out there. This is why this is such a big deal. If you can stay uh, right now, raise your hand and say, I will never let my ATO bin run dry, yeah, then it's not that. an issue. <laughs> Nobody can say that though, for the most part. Mm -hmm. So uh, if your ATO runs dry and the water level in your sump, and it's not your whole sump usually that mm -hmm. has to go, go, go down, just the return it's pump. a few gallons in that return pump area yeah. that needs to evaporate, which could be a single day. And then before you know it, it's just spinning wildly and sucking in air and burning out. It could not only burn out, but like add metals and stuff to the tank, but you're obviously gonna destroy the pump. So a lot of AC pumps will just totally burn out in that environment. Right. DCs can sometimes spin out wildly, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the Varios, they have a little float switch that will turn it yep. off that you can plug in. This guy will just recognize it by default, turn off. The Varios will do that. And uh, the uh, CJ will mm -hmm. send you the alarms. So just note that it is uh, actually super valuable feature on a lot of the DC pumps that when the inevitable happens, you forget about your uh, ATO container and the thing runs dry, your pump has got your back and it'll be there as soon as you fill it back up. All right, so number 15, the pump is gonna have to come out of the sump. You should account for it. Yeah, and so that means don't make the mistake of not putting some way to uh, disconnect the pump out of there with a union, quick connect couplers, or anything that just makes it quick and easy to pull this thing out. Yeah, so if I have to crawl inside the sump and like with this case, you know, try to take a bunch of uh, clamps off and the tubing, whatever it can be, a big, big pain mm -hmm. in the butt. It's also really hard to reassemble. But if I have something like just a union, I can remove it pretty easy. I mm -hmm. can go maintenance it, I can bring it back. I think that uh, the Varios here also has unions. They're yeah, like a lot of options actually now some have some union. kind of unions, yep. but you can also get like those colder click, quick necks, uh, all kinds of different things that make it really, really easy easy to disassemble it, take it out, and for that matter, make sure that, uh, it may look neat the day one, but Cords. make sure that your cord is somehow that you can take it out, whether you, instead of using zip ties and stuff, maybe use Velcro straps right. that you can remove and then replace when you're done. All right, so number 16, I actually have never done this before. Mm. It's kind of the final frontier for a re return pump. But it's a miss to not actually think about it. Yeah, it is a miss to not consider battery backup options out there. There's one that stands out to us, of the Vectra, and uh, it does have the Ecotech battery backup, and you do get the, the booster cable for it. Uh, I mean, it, it's something to consider because it has on-off run times that are adjustable, so 5, 15, you know, 10, 15, so on. So you can kind of adjust in how long that battery is going to last for you and if it works for you, but there is an option. So there's something to think about here too. And sometimes you think of power outages, uh, my whole uh, power went out in my house, but it could just be that the core wiggle loose. It could mm. be just that that circuit went loose uh, yeah. or tripped on the circuit breaker or the GFCI and just that outlet triggered. Mm -hmm. And so maybe the whole system's running, but just not your return pump. Yeah, right? that's true. Uh, and so in this case, that will protect against that or even the full outage, at least circulating some water. And the reason that like a lot of people won't use those computer-based ones is because you'll probably burn through it in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, These quick. suck up enough power that it'll go pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, but with something like the Vectra, which is DC, and then it actually only turns on for periods of time, so mm -hmm. it gives it some spurts, turns it over, waits, and does it again. Well, actually, it lasts a pretty good deal of time. You can daisy chain them if you want. So think about the battery backup solution because the inevitable happens and uh, you can be prepared for it. 
All right, so number 17, I kind of blame the manufacturers in this one because it's actually pretty important. Yeah, that's making the mistake of either using no strainer at all on your pump or not using a large enough one. So if there's one way to protect from like the wandering snail or pieces of debris going in your pump and potentially locking it up or breaking some of the fins inside, it's a strainer. I mean, these pumps are sucking in water pretty fast. So like little random rock or anything, mm -hmm. just gonna suck right in there, snail shell, and snails make it down there all the time. Yep. So uh, really, really think about that because it matters. So you know, something like the CJ pump has it kind of built in, you know, and yep. uh, you're not gonna get it. So these things have been built around that. I think the uh, these guys come with a big basket on it. Mm -hmm. I'm certain that you can find like 3D printed ones these days that fit on almost anything universally. Yep. But Protect your pump and your tank and the whole system by putting on some type of strainer. Make sure it's big enough that it's not uh, you know, choking the pump, but it will protect the whole system if you're making sure the snails don't go in there. All right, so number 18, I actually haven't used this a lot, but I might. Yeah, and uh, that's making the mistake of not using some of the pumps with feed modes. So there are feed modes available in some of these newer smart pumps, Vectras, the cores and things like that, in which case, uh, instead of just shutting off my power and all the water and food and whatever I have rushing back down to the sump, it actually keeps the, lar the lines charged. So it's still spinning and just enough so that no food's going down, nothing's coming back out. Yeah, so I value, I mean, I, we've all seen it. We've yeah. all seen all of our food go right down the overflow when you add it in, even sometimes when you use those uh, little feeding rings. True. So here's the reason I don't tend to use them is uh, a lot of times they're just on and off with like an AC pump. Mm -hmm. You hit a feed mode and it just turns off the pump. All right, it's been my experience that that is the time that it fails. <laughs> so uh, if you turn it off, it just doesn't turn back on yep. again. And maybe it's getting caught on a little bit of precipitate. But the problem is, is I'm gonna hit feed mode, I'm gonna feed, and then I'm gonna walk away, and I'll never know if it turned back on mm -hmm. again. Okay, so with these types of pumps where you hit the feed mode and it actually keeps running, yep. keeps those lines charged, and just slows down, I'm not as concerned about that because it's still running. It's just at a slower rate. So hit the feed mode, keeps the lines charged, feed the, th uh, the fish, and then walk away. It'll probably turn back on uh, or slide back up. So any of these types of pumps, I'm way, way more comfortable. And I think it is actually a really good value. All right, number 19, we harp on this all the time. It's totally true. There's probably a whole bunch of you have the ability to do this out there and you aren't using it. You haven't listened to any of the videos we've done. <laughs> you should. Yeah, the mistake is not turning on power monitoring if you have something like a Nep Neptune Apex controller where it's built in because power monitoring, especially on a piece of equipment that is always uh, intended to be on and what it can really tell you and alert you of is if mistakes are happening or have happened. Yeah, so basically with Apex, if this thing stops taking power, takes too much, it'll tell you, or any of these pumps, even yep. this one, it was, it's supposed to take 60 watts, and all of a sudden it's only taking 10, it'll tell you the moment that it happened. Yep. So it was one way to know that the heart of your tank fell uh, or failed immediately. And so go out there, there's a little task, you just push the task <laughs> and you run through a couple options and done. You will now know the moment your tank's heart fails. So you can actually do something about it. Even if you're out of town, at least you can call somebody yes. and they can go over and do it because you know it happened. All right, so before we get to number 20, if there's only one thing you heard today, let it be this. Yeah, for me, that is you don't need 10 times turnover. Bring down that uh, idea of how much turnover you need and it actually surprise you on how much money you can save from downsizing your pump in not only electrical costs, but the cost of the pump itself. And you'll actually save some money on power and uh, the replacement of the pump oh, eventually sure. as well. So yep. savings all around. And the thing that I will say, the one takeaway, is that number that's on the box, that thousand gallons an hour, total garbage. <laughs> Don't pay attention to it. Make sure that you apply some math mm -hmm. to uh, how high that you have it mounted and uh, you know, figure out the actual head pressure for your tank to mm -hmm. some degree. Give it a couple extra feet and you'll probably be close enough, but make sure you're not just paying attention. A thousand gallons an hour is not a thousand yep. gallons an hour. True. All right, so number 20 here. All right, so if you do happen to have an apex, yes. you know, the kind of thing that tells you if something's wrong with your, your equipment, and can notify you about it and has redundancy and can actually solve stuff in real time for you, make sure that you go over here and watch Randy's video on mastering your apex and return pumps because you're gonna get a lot more use out of that tool that you bought and really master it and get all the benefit out of it.